Uh, so good morning and good afternoon to uh, everybody. Um, I'm uh, Dr. Aruba Dehneem and I will be joined with Dr. Amin al -Awadi. And today uh, we will have uh, two lectures. Um, it will be uh, the first one will be delivered by Dr. Amin, the Dermatopathology of Melanocytic Lesion. And I will do a couple of um, uh, brainstorming cases uh, and Hope you all enjoy um, the lecture of the third meeting today. Um, and uh, please kindly just mute uh, your microphone and uh, close your camera as well. Uh, so everyone will be uh, uh, you know, focused on the lecture. So all to yours first, Dr. Amin. Hello, hi, yeah, thanks. Um, again, thank you everyone for joining us uh, uh, this morning and this evening, uh, wherever you are. Um, so today's lecture will be the second in the series of dermatopathology. Um, uh, before I start this lecture, I'd just like to announce again that uh, we will be happily repeating our first lecture, the dermatopathology of normal skin, and we will do it in a, in a separate session next week, um, even though we do one every two weeks, but next week will be a specific session to repeat that one. And, and today we will continue that series with melanocytic lesions, which, which to me is one of the most important uh, parts of uh, dermatopathology. Um, I will go through as much uh, types of lesions as I can. Um, I will be happy to answer any of your questions in the, in the chat box. And uh, but if we have time at the end of the lecture, we will, uh, we will uh, also answer a few questions. So to start, uh, we want to make this uh, an interactive session. So uh, let's uh, start in for the, from the first slide. What kind of lesion do you see here? And no one say melanocytic lesion. Uh, what type of melanocytic lesion do we see here? Hello? Anyone? Intradermal nevus. Okay, so um, you're right when it, with with the, with the nevus. Um, so with the to, to start this lecture, I think it's always important to start with the most basic uh, entity, which is the the normal uh, melanocytic nevus, which we call a nevo melanocytic nevus. So for those, we have uh, uh, them uh, in uh, three forms: either in uh, junctional, where they involve only the the uh, dermal epidermal junction, or dermal nevus when they only involve the dermal uh, the dermal component, and we call them compound when uh, they uh, involve both parts, uh, as in this case. So I just use this this uh, example because as uh, uh, as dermatopathology uh, uh, is concerned, most of the time we get this type of lesion because uh, usually the junctional nevus uh, is found in, in in children and as people grow up they start to become compound and then they become dermal nevus. And since no one usually biopsies uh, children, we rarely ever get to see the just normal junctional nevus. Most of the time when we biopsy them, we see uh, the, the compound type, which uh, we can see here. So what are the features of, of a normal nevus, whether it's junctional, compound, or intradermal? Um, most important thing when you see these lesions is obviously to know that this is uh, a nevus rather than a melanoma. And in this uh, uh, example, there's a lot of features that would hint towards a, a, a benign nature. And uh, you, you can freely type any features that you see here, and I will confirm it if it's right or wrong. And I will go on and keep say uh, and 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 uh, say other features as well. So uh, you can you feel feel free to 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 give examples while I'm uh, explaining. So the First of all, the most important aspect in, in, in any malignancy or, or benign entity is uh, to note symmetry of a lesion. Uh, and that's important in, 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 in any uh, the, the, um, uh, neoplastic uh, condition in the skin, where, not just melanocytic. So what we here see here is very good symmetry. You see from the left and the right of the lesion, it, it, it's, uh, it's quite symmetric. Uh, they look like each other on both sides from uh, left to right. Second important feature is uh, how uh, regular the, the, the edges are. See, if you can see here, uh, the, the, the borders of the lesion are very, very, very uh, smooth borders all over the lesion. That's a very strong indicator that the lesion is, uh, is, uh, is of a benign nature. Um, 
if it was malignant, you would see like an invasive component. Uh, you can see like you know uh, the 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 the, the malignants are starting to dig into and 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 uh, pa push through the the, the dermis. Um, another important feature which we can see here, and to me it's uh, it's uh, it's a very nice uh, indication of uh, any lesion being uh, benign uh, when it's uh, when it comes to melanocytic lesion, and that's um, maturation. So what do we call uh, mature? Uh, how do we describe maturation? If you can see here, the cells in the in the superficial uh, dermis or the dermal epidermal junction, they are more nested, they are larger, they're more epithelioid. But as we go more down, they become smaller and more rounded. And then when we go really deep, they, they tend to be quite tiny compared to the cells in the top. So you can see they become even like a more spindle shaped. So if we go back, look at, the, look at this as an outline. You can compare the size, like see how giant they are in the top with their large nuclei and see how tiny they start to become and scattered they, they, they become. That's a strong indicator that the lesion is, uh, is, a, is a normal nevus. And you, you, you make use of this feature, not just for a regular nevi, you make use of this feature in, in Spitz nevi and, and, and some blue nevi and, um, and, and many combined nevi. You, you always have to note maturation from the top to bottom. And this lesion shows perfect uh, maturation. Another important feature that we see here is uh, the nesting. The nesting, uh, when it's uh, mostly on the top of the lesion and, and minimally in the bottom of the lesion, this tells you that this is a benign lesion as well. So we can see here, all the nests are mostly in the upper dermis and the junction. And uh, in, the, in the dermis, uh, when you go deeper, there, there's hardly any, if any, nest. Um, junctional component is very important, as you can see here. The nests are mostly in the, in the tips of the reef ridges. They're not in the, in the, in the uh, top of the dermal papillae. Always like, use the term like, you know, our, uh, uh, if you find them in the arch, which is, should be your arch enemy, uh, a melanoma. If you find many uh, melanocytes or nests in the arch, uh, that's a bad sign. But if you can see here, they're mostly in the, in the, uh, the, in the tips of which ridges, uh, which uh, is a very reassuring uh, feature. So just moving on to the next, this is how it is when it becomes dermal, uh, intradermal nevus. Um, again, if you see it, it's quite symmetrical, quite so well circumscribed. Uh, I'll just point out a couple of features that some that at first might be a little bit uh, uh, odd for you, but uh, they are very normally found in, uh, in nevi. This is what we call pseudovascular spaces. If you can see like, you know, uh, at, at, a, uh, at a very low power, you might think of this like a vascular lesion. There's a lot of spaces. And like I told you before in our first lecture, when you see empty spaces in the dermis, you think of either cysts, you think of either artifacts, or you think of, uh, of, of, of gland or, or, or blood vessel. And, uh, and uh, these are the main things you should think of, but there's always exceptions. So here, melanocytes can develop our, uh, artifactual clefts in between them, and uh, they can look like blood vessels. This is a very normal feature. Another uh, feature that I'm trying to look for here, yeah, this here, if you can see here in the center of the field, there's a very large uh, uh, melanocyte. And uh, you know, when, when we talk about benign and malignant, you know, pleomorphism, hyperchromatism, large nuclei are features of malignancy. But when you see, generally speaking, the, the, the rest of the, all, like almost all the melanocytes are normal and you've got these scattered large melanocytes, this is fine. This is just ancient chain. Sometimes when the melanocyte is very old, we call them like you know ancient melanocytic features. This is very normal, and the general uh, generally the lesion looks very normal. Another feature is important to note: uh, the absence of is the mitosis, especially in the deeper layers. If you find any mitosis, that's a feature that should uh, make you a bit concerned. And you, you know, in this one, you don't really see anything. So moving on to the next uh, lesion. Let's see here. Can anyone tell me what we're looking at here? What type of melanocytic lesion? Is it a nevus? Is it a melanoma? Is it a blue nevus? Is it a spitz nevus? Is it uh, not melanocytic at all? And I'm using it as a trick uh, slide. Can anyone tell me? Is it a lentigo? Okay, uh, it's a good point. That, I mean, uh, when it uh, when you said lentigo, you must have focused on the you know the reefy ridges and the and the colored reefy ridges, which is uh, uh, not uh, bad. But uh, if you focus here, there's a lot of nests. 
in Atlantigo, you would not find nest. In, the, in Atlantigo, what, what defines Atlantigo is that a, high, a pigmented lesion with minimal, if not all, not, no uh, increase in melanocytes. But here we see a lot of uh, nest. So that uh, uh, excludes the Atlantigo, but a good, uh, good uh, differential. Anyone? This would be a junctional nevus. So this is a junctional nevus, um, but uh, there's some uh, some dermal component as well here. So you can see here melanocytes in the dermis as well. So this is a dysplastic nevus, or what they used to call before Clark nevus. So dysplastic nevi are a very interesting entity for for uh, in, in for dermatopathology. Um, Honestly speaking, when I used to study junctional uh, nevi and dysplastic nevi clinically by, back when I was a resident, it was really hard for me to say what, what's a dysplastic nevus because clinically, it just tells you that it's a nevus with some features of melanoma with asymmetry and, uh, and border irregularity. So I used to say like, what's really the, like how can we really tell the difference? But then when you, when you go deep into dermatopathology, you know that it's, this is mainly a dermatopathology term, a dysplastic nevus. So a dysplastic nevus is just a benign nevus that uh, that has specific uh, histological features on uh, on on uh, on pathology, and uh, we usually grade them as mild, moderate, or severely dysplastic nevi. And what you should know is that when we grade them as mild, moderate, or severe, this is, it's not really about like the malignant potential because like the when it's once it's benign, it's usually benign, and once it's malignant, it's usually malignant. Um, when we say mild, moderate, or severe uh, in terms of uh, of uh, pathology, we really just like as a, as a, as a as a as dermatopathology, we we're just trying to tell the clinician how concerned we are or how confident we are that this is a nevus. For example, when I say this is a, a mildly dysplastic nevus, I usually mean that I'm really confident and I'm willing to like you know risk my career. Or I'm willing to risk the patient's health. To say that you know this is, uh, or, or, or in other words, I'm not I'm not risking the patient's health because I'm pretty sure that the patient is having a mildly dysplastic nevus and this is a benign nevus and there's nothing needed to be done. And when I say it's a severely dysplastic nevus, it's me telling the clinician, very frankly, I really don't know if this is a nevus or a melanoma. I can't. Uh, I don't have enough criteria to say that this is a melanoma. But then again, I really can't say that this is a uh, nevus because it looks really abnormal on on uh, on etching -E or or with stains. Moderate is usually a uh, 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 midway between the two. Like when I really think it's a nevus, but then I just feel a little bit concerned, and I I, I give the clinician the, the the decision whether or not to remove it uh, or not. Uh, like with margins, I tell the we, we say that this is moderately dysplastic, and uh, there's a lot of literature, literature going on to 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 uh, like you know with or against uh, uh, removing the uh, the ones that are uh, graded as moderate. But um, for for the time being, it's uh, um, always up to uh, like uh, up to the clinic the the pathologist and up to the clinician whether or not they feel uh, safe uh, keeping it on because there's no conclusive evidence yet uh, to remove it or not. For the, for the severely dysplastic nevi, it's always recommended because uh, many of them are maybe melanomas and we didn't, uh, we didn't find them out. So if it's severely dysplastic, it definitely excites them with margins. If it's uh, mild, you just leave them. If it's moderate, some say do remove it, some say don't. So let's look for the features that would uh, um, uh, um, highlight this as a dysplastic nevus. First of all, the the it's uh, if you if you compare it to the previous lesions with, that we saw earlier, it is not that uh, regular and symmetric. Like you can see some areas with larger nests, as you can see here, and some area and and next to it some areas with very small nests. So that's a feature that 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 you don't usually see in a normal nevus. Second of all, the cells. You can see the cells. They are they are a little bit large. They are they are a little bit clear and grayish compared to the ones we saw earlier, which which is a feature of uh, dysplastic nevi. Another important feature is the bridging. This one you would uh, you you would see it a lot mentioned in your board, and you'd see it a lot in, when they would bring it for you in exams. Bridging of the reti ridges. You can see a nest that make, brings uh, two two reti ridges together, like you know kissing here, um, and, you, and you can see it throughout uh, the, the the lesion, as you can see here. 
again, three carriages being uh, brought in together, so they are bridged, and uh, and uh, cells sometimes become hyperchromatic. Nests uh, um, can can vary in size from large to small. So these are features of dysplastic nevi. What makes me think this is a dysplastic nevi, not a melanoma? Again, you can see normal maturation cells go down and and and, and become into smaller nests, scatter the uh, down to the to the to the base. Uh, there's not much single nanocyte in the in the epidermis as much as there's nest. That's a very important feature. In the epidermis, you should always see nests. In the dermis, you should always see like say, say scattered cells. When it's the opposite, and you see a lot of scattered cells in the epidermis and a lot of nests in the dermis, that's when you start to be concerned. Um, there's no pagetoid spreads of melanocytes, which is a feature that uh, makes me feel even more comfortable. And if you notice, again, the, the, the nests are mostly in the tips of the reachy ridges rather than in the arches or between the reachy ridges. So all these features make me confident that this is a, a, a benign nevus. Another one here, uh, same thing. I just wanted to use a very quick other example. Again, another one that is also a, a dysplastic nevus, mild. You can see here large nest that's always in the tips of the reach ridges, large next to a small nest. There's some single melanocytes in the, in the epidermis, which is always a concerning feature. But when you uh, grade or, or, or take any feature into consideration, you, could, you should put it in the context of the general picture. If you can see here again, see there's no nest in the dermis as much as it's just scattered melanocytes maturing. See how big they are in the epidermis and how small they are when they reach the, the, the dermis. These are all features that would tell me that this is a, a, a benign lesion. Moving on, this is a dysplastic nevus with moderate atypia. If you can see here, nests are become much larger. There are some cells, if you can see here, going up into the arches here, like a melanocyte here. Uh, the nests are larger than the ones we saw earlier, if you can see here. Much larger nests, even larger melanocytes. Some like to use uh, the size of melanocytes as a, as a, as a base point to, to, to determine if it's a mild, moderate, or severely dysplastic. Like they say, if the, if the, if the melanocytes are, like, are the same size as the, the, the normal melanocytes, we call it mild. If it's up to two times the size, we call it moderate. If it's more than two times, uh, we call it severe. But I don't usually like to use that as the only criterion. When we, when we, sorry, when we uh, grade it as mild, moderate, or severe, we should take much, uh, several uh, features into consideration. Uh, again, just to browse around this region, I want to see if there's anything uh, features that I want to mention to you. But no. So this is a moderately dysplastic nevus, uh, given the size of the nest, much larger, given the scattered melanocytes uh, uh, being more than we saw earlier. So if you can see here as well, they're, they're starting to become single and along the hair follicle, which is always a concerning feature, not just because uh, this could be a melanoma, but because uh, when, when they go down the hair follicles and you, you excise them, there's a very good chance they might recur and come back in the future. So, so that's a feature that you should always keep in mind. Um, moving on again, um, uh, this is another feature that, uh, another uh, example of, uh, moderately dysplastic uh, nevus, just quickly. I like to use several examples just to, just to, to, to make the point stick. Um, again, you see the bridging of the reti ridges, very obvious here in the center of the lesion. But then again, on the other hand, it's, it's maturing well into the dermis and that's always a, con, 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 uh, 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 a good feature. Um, but what's in, uh, a little bit abnormal here, if, if you can notice, it's not much nest as, as there's several single melanocytes going, moving along all along the, 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 the reach ridges. If we, let's see if we can find any feature or interesting feature in the rest of the lesion. Yeah, you can see here, again, bridging of the reach ridges, some single melanocytes going upwards in the, in the uh, not upwards, just being in the arches of the dermal junction. These are features that we usually don't like, and this is another lesion where we degraded as uh, moderately dysplastic. Just as a quick example of something that we would consider to be a severely dysplastic uh, nevus, as you can see here. Let's go up close. This is the kind of lesion where I usually really can't confirm 100% if it's a, a nevus or a melanoma. Uh, see how they're all single cells and they're growing all along the ridges. See how large the cells are. This is more than twice the size of a normal melanocyte. If you see here in the center of the field, huge melanocytes. So this is a feature that would make me worry. And if you can see here, they're just 
moving along, I don't know if you can see my pointer or not, but the, like, you know, they're just traveling along the reef ridges and, and not really forming much nest. Uh, but then again, they go and mature in the dermis. And so I can't really call it a melanoma. There's not much pagetoid uh, cells, so I really can't call it a melanoma or a melanoma in situ. But then again, you understand when I say that I can't even call it a, a, a nevus. I can't just tell the clinician, okay, it's a nevus, just you don't need to re excise. You can't. So, so we have these terms in order to, to express uh, sometimes the uh, histological difficulties and, 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 and not being able to call it neither a nevus or a melanoma. Okay? So, moving on to our next example. Um, this is not a different condition as much as it's uh, a, an important pointer for you to know. There's uh, something we call nevus of special site or special site nevi. Um, can anyone tell me what the special sites are? And uh, by, say, by, by uh, saying special site nevi, we usually mean that there are sp special parts of the body where nevi can have some atypical features, but they're, they're, they are benign. So, so can anyone tell me what uh, uh, some examples of parts of the body where, where you can find nevi that can be a little bit like, you know, funny looking? Like the breast and genital area. Genital skin. Genital skin, very good example. Breast, uh, good. And uh, someone, uh, and, and Abdullah says acryl. Yes, that is correct. Acryl, genital, milk line, uh, sometimes in the scalp. In the ears as well, you can find them uh, abnormal, and the umbilicus. So these uh, these areas, we can we like to use the term they they are allowed to have some atypical features, as you can see here. See some large nests here, very large nests. Uh, some features in the arch, but the general picture is uh, is again benign. We don't have any large nests going on deep into the dermis. So so. This, I would call it, I think I wouldn't even call it uh, mild because uh, it still has some nests in the dermis, but you always downgrade them when, they, when, they, when you find them in the, in the actual areas. And this is another example, which is in the ear. You can see here how, how you can have a very large nest in, the, in the, the dermis. I don't want to use these examples to confuse you as much as just to like, you know, may enlighten you into the, into the, 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 uh, the idea that some, some areas of the body are allowed to have some atypical features. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Sorry, I don't know. Okay. Uh, can anyone tell me what type of uh, lesion this is? Very quick. It's a very So this is a blue nevus. Very good. So we got a blue nevus here. Uh, what are the features that would tell us this is a blue nevus? First of all, again, uh, uh, it is uh, well circumscribed, as you can see here. Um, uh, a feature that always uh, makes allows me to uh, to diagnose blue nevi easily is not the monocytes themselves, but the sclerosis and the dermis. If you can see here, the dermis is very red compared to what we saw earlier in slide. So this is a very common feature we find in blue nevi. And the other feature is how it's pigmented. Um, see how, like you know, the melanocytes themselves are very normal. They, they don't have like giant nuclei. See here, the melanocytes they have a very pink. Uh, uh, like, you know, pinkish, uh, uh, light, violet uh, 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 cytoplasm. The not like the dysplastic ones we saw earlier where, where they have like, you know, hyperchromatic nuclei. Hyperchromatic nuclei is always a feature you should be concerned about because it means like, you know, the cell is starting to divide and there's a lot of DNA inside so they become hyperchromatic. In this case, you can see it, it is not. You can just see a lot of pigment in the, in the, in the cytoplasm. And an, an important feature to, to, to distinguish a, a blue nevus from a, from a, another nevus is there's no epidermal component. All the dysplastic nevi and, and, and most of uh, normal nevi and pit nevi, they have a, an epidermal component. And most, uh, like majority, more than 19 to 95% of melanomas have an epidermal component, but the blue nevi don't. Uh, the only situation where they have one is a situation we'll be talking about later in this uh, lecture. So this is a good example of a, a, a common blue nevus, which usually is seen either near birth or like, you know, around puberty. And uh, you usually find them on the scalp or, or in the acral areas. Um, the distinctive demoscopic feature in it is like a general blue color without any other features. This is another type of blue nevus. We call it the cellular blue nevus. Um, uh, uh, for you as residents, the, 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 the distinctive feature it is that it looks like a dumbbell shape down, like you see it's, uh, it's, it's uh, uh, narrow at the top and then larger in the bottom. 
uh, at first what you think like you know this is a malignant lesion you know see it's, it's going really deep into the dermis and sorry it's going really deep into the dermis this is really concerning but then when you look close to it again the the, the dense sclerosis that you usually used to seeing with the blue nevus is there the pigmented cytoplasm is there but the most important feature that you would find that you would uh, uh, distinguish this from melanoma is the cells again see there are First of all, they're uniform, they, 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 and, and they are very bland looking. You don't see much hyperchromatic cells. See the vesicular nuclei here in, in the blue nevus, and there isn't any mitosis. Any deep mitosis you would find in the blue nevus, you, you, you would start to suspect it as a blue nevus-like melanoma. So, so these are the features. And then even though it goes really deep, you can see the margins are, are quite smooth. You don't see it like you know, being in, in, invasive at, at all. So these are features that uh, you would find in, uh, in, uh, in a cellular blue nevus. Cellular blue nevus, I, uh, uh, we usually recommend re-excision, like you know, treating them as like you know, dysplastic nevi sometimes because cellular blue nevus has have been seen to sometimes recur or, or turn into melanomas. Moving on, what kind of lesion is this? It's it's this is a Spitz nevus. Uh, you're absolutely correct. So Spitz nevus um, uh, has several features that makes it uh, distinguishable. First of all, um, the name Spitz nevus is the other name for it is the spindles and epithelial cell nevus. So very often they have a combination of spindle and epithelial cells, but sometimes they are only epithelioid, and sometimes they're only spindle cells. So so just be aware of that uh, phenomenon. Um, a distinguishing feature here, um, like, you, like again, uh, generally speaking, you can see it's a nevus. It has a junctional component and it has a dermal component. So it's a compound, compound uh, spit nevus. Um, uh, a distinguishing feature is, uh, is here. You can see there's cleft, a lot of cleft between the, the, the rest of the epidermis and the nest. That is a very common feature seen with the spit uh, nevus. Another feature you can see is uh, the, the, the nests are somewhat vertical. Uh, just like, you know, they describe them as like, you know, bananas on a banana tree. Um, uh, you can see here, um, they're very vertical. Um, I'm looking for another feature, but I don't really see it here. But if I see it, I would, uh, I would uh, uh, bring the, the attention to you. Um, some, sometimes you can find also cells uh, going up uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in, the, up in the epidermis, like pagetoid cells. But that's very normal to see in the center of the lesion. If you see them in the, a lot in the border, you would be concerned. But if you see the pedicellate cells in the center, you would be, uh, it's fine for a, for a, for a, a spit nevus, as you can see some of them here, some here, cells going, climbing up, but that's normal to see in the center of a spit nevus. Um, another important uh, histological feature would be camino bodies, which I usually, which I can't find here in this uh, slide, but, uh, there's like, you know, pinkish, oh, there it is here. So these, this pinkish basement membrane, oh, there's another one here as well. This pinkish uh, basement membrane component, when you see it in the epidermis, this is, this is quite a, dis a distinguishing feature for a spit nevi. You rarely find them in melanomas. So that's a comforting feature. Um, but then again, spit nevi have a lot of abnormal features that make us concerned, as you can see here. Large nests in the, in the, in the dermis is never a good feature. Which, uh, which is why we always say that these lesions are, are not your typical nevus and uh, very often they are recommended to be re-excised. Re so see large nest, but in most areas you can see it's scattering and, 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 and becoming single cells and smaller into the rest of the dermis. Another important feature if you see it on the low power is the symmetry of it. If you can see here, it's very symmetrical, not invasive looking. Um, Spitz nevi, it really depends on the age that, uh, of the patient when you diagnose it. If you find it in a child, you can just say that this is a spit nevus and, uh, and you can just even monitor it. If you see it in an adult, um, you should be very hesitant, hesitant to call it a spit nevus. Sometimes you need to do molecular testing to make sure there's no uh, chromosomal or genetic abnormalities suggestive of melanoma. And, and even if it's all normal, very often we recommend re-excision for a spit nevus in an adult. Another example, just quick example of a spit nevus. You can see the vertical uh, nest. Uh, again, they just scatter on the, the, the deeper layers of the epidermis, of the dermis, I mean. And uh, yeah, uh, so, so, and uh, you can see some of the chemino bodies and some uh, pegetoid cells uh, 
uh, in the center of the lesion, which is a very normal feature. Moving on, the next uh, lesion is uh, is uh, this one. Um, this uh, you find it usually in the in the thighs of uh, young women. Uh, they are very highly pigmented. They have a starburst appearance uh, on the dermoscopy. Can anyone tell me what kind of lesion this is? Nevis of Reed. Nevis, exactly. Spindle cell nevus of Reed. You can see here, most of the nevi are, are spindle shaped. And uh, there's a lot of pigment, uh, pigmented cells in the dermis, which gives it its rich black color in, uh, on, uh, on the clinical, uh, uh, like, you know, when you see it clinically uh, by, by, uh, by naked eye. And uh, histologically, you can, uh, uh, you can see this uh, pigment. Uh, they very often have pegetoid cells in the center of the lesion, which is uh, also a normal feature. Moving on to our next uh, slide. Um, so this is a, a, a feature that uh, you should be very often aware of. So what you see here is what you saw earlier, a blue nevus. You can see here scattered cells all over the dermis with sclerosis, pigment in the cytoplasm, no abnormal nuclear features. But what I see here is something else. What is this? This is a dermal nevus, interdermal nevus. See with their epithelial cells and scattering to the border, to the base, and not much pigment. So what do you call this kind of nevus? Yeah, this part is, uh, shows it more. So we have a blue nevus, and we have an interdermal nevus, monocytic nevus in one lesion. What do you call this? Is that a collision nevus? A collision nevus or a combined nevus, so we sometimes, uh, very often we call them. So we call them a, combi a combined nevus. Um, uh, combined nevi can, uh, can be a mixture, of, it's most often a mixture of a normal nevus and a blue nevus. Um, very often there is an epidermal component to the, to the normal nevus, and that's what I told you earlier, that, that that would be the only situation where you would find a blue nevus uh, with uh, an epidermal component. That's, that's when it's part of a combined nevus. But uh, theoretically and uh, practically, we, 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 we can see a combination of any types of blue nevus. Sometimes it's a combination of spitz and blue nevus. Sometimes it's a combination of spitz and normal nevus. So it can be a combination of any types of two types of nevi, but most often it's between a nevomelanocytic nevus and a blue nevus. Okay, moving on uh, to the next uh, slide. Uh, what kind of nevus is this? So I just want to point out uh, features that might be a little bit hint. See, they're infiltrating a lot, they're becoming a lot of, uh, you know, having a lot of interstitial spread into the dermis. Um, they are prevascular, prefollicular. Um, uh, if you can see here, they're going around the, 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 the vessels, around the, the nexal structure here. Uh, and this was found at uh, birth in a patient. So this is like the biggest hint for you guys. Congenital nevus. Congenital nevus, yes. So congenital nevi, they're very large. And, and obviously, when you see them clinically, they're very large. So histologically, they should be very large. They have specific features. Like, you know, in the, in the top, they look like normal nevi when they, we see, like, you know, nests that start to scatter, out, scatter about when they go deeper. But there are other features that, that uh, you don't usually find in normal nevi, which is, like, you know, interstitial spread into the, into the deep into the dermis. And its, uh, and its tendency to go around the uh, neurovascular and, and adnexal structures like here. You see, this is part of the hair follicle, so it's going around the spacious gland. And you can see also here, it's going around the, the, this eccrine uh, duct. Uh, and and, uh, and uh, if you go to the rest of the lesion, you will see how it's going here really deep. It's prob this is probably just, uh, in the background, which we don't see here, probably like a hair follicle or a duct or a gland or something. So, so yeah. So, um, so this is a congenital nevus. What reassures us again is the, how it's like, you know, large on top, the cells become smaller when you go down. Even at this lower power, you can see that, you can tell that these cells are larger with the larger cytoplasm, more dense, and then they start to like, you know, dwindle and become smaller as we go deeper. I have another example of a congenital nevus, if you can see here. See how it likes to involve around the hair follicle. It's being a little interstitial. Interstitial means it's like, you know, trickling between the collagen uh, fibers. If you can see here, it goes around the blood vessel, blood vessels and the and the grind uh, glands and ducts. So, so these are features of uh, of a uh, of a uh, of a congenital nevus. Sometimes in a congenital nevus, you will have large nodules of cells, as you can see here, large nodules of cells. But uh, what what's a reassuring feature is like when you see it phase into the rest of the of the of the lesion. 
you see here, this might be a little bit dense here, but it becomes less and less and less and less dense with, uh, with, uh, with area. Um, this, for example, as an example, I wanted to tell you how a melanoma can arise from a congenital nevus. You can see here the large nodule is, is, is sharply demarcated uh, uh, in, in, against the, uh, the rest of the, of the benign nevus component. See here, it's really dense and suddenly it cuts off to the normal the nevus. This is, this is a, a, in stark contrast to what we saw earlier here, how would they just fade in. When you, in large power, you can see a nodule, but in low power, you just see a, like, you know, dense cells that fade into the rest of the, of the, uh, of the, of the legion. And that's a very important feature to, to, to notice. Okay, so moving on to our next uh, lesion. Can anyone tell me what we see here? We may need to move a little bit uh, faster. So what we see here is uh, melanocytes and there's a large infiltrate of lymphocytes around them. You can see here these small cells, these are lymphocytes, they're not melanocytes. The, 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 the pinkish ones are melanocytes but between them, there's a lot of lymphocytes. So this is what we call a halo nevus. So when you see normal, like in a normal melanocytes nested in the dermis, and there's a lot of lymphocytes in between them, this is usually uh, what we call a halo nevus, as we can see here again. So sometimes it's very hard. Like for example, I use this as an example. So sometimes it's very hard, and very often we need to do stains to to, to know when you do use a melanase stain, for example, or, or S100 or, or HMB45, you'll see the melanocytes uh, here. And uh, it will take, uh, you know, get rid of the lymphocytes, and you would know that these normal normal nests uh, that uh, you know become uh, smaller and mature and become single cells in the base, uh, and you will know that the rest are lymphocytes. So this is an uh, the the fact that the lymphocytes go between the melanocytes and like you know uh, that some some would describe it as like, you know partying with them uh, in the same level. Uh, that's a that's a normal that's a feature that is reassuring to us. When you see the lymphocytes walling off, uh, like you know, like uh, a police trying to stop, uh, like you know, a riot uh, in the in the base, what uh, like you know, uh, like Elson likes to describe it. Um, that's what we call uh, a melanoma, as we can see here, for example. Uh, the 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 lymphocytes are walling off the uh, the, uh, the 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 melanocytes, and that's a feature that would uh, be uh, more consistent. Sorry. With uh, with uh, melanoma, as you can see here, the, the the lymphocytes are in the base of the lesion mostly, and the lymph and the melanocytes are on the top. Um, Wait, I'm sorry. Like before the halo nevus, you said something about the melanocytes being sharply demarcated. That was a feature of congenital nevus or something else. Um, well, see what we were talking about here in the congenital nevus. Congenital nevus usually they they what I was saying is that when you find large nodules in the in the congenital nevus, if it fades away with the rest of the with the rest of the uh, uh, lesion, uh, this is a reassuring feature. When when you find a large nodule that you can you can sharply demarcate it from the rest of the lesion. That's a feature that might mean that the patient developed a melanoma within their nevus. So is that what you were asking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So moving on to our next uh, example. Uh, okay. So what we see here is a regular nevus. So nothing very interesting. But uh, if you remember what we talked about in our previous lecture, what do you see here in the epidermis? Can anyone tell me very quickly? Like, the, like, you know, here between the cells. And let's not focus on melanocytes. Let's focus on the keratinocytes. Spongiosis. There's a lot of spongiosis. So when you find the nevus, clinically, it looks like red and uh, itchy and, and the spongiosis and histology. What kind of nevus do you call this? Myerson's nevus, or, or just in, 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 nor in English terms, uh, uh, an inflamed nevus. So this is an important uh, point you have to be aware of sometimes clinically, because you know we always say when a, when a nevus or a mole looks reddish or bluish, we'll be concerned. But uh, this uh, lesion can be like you know red, itchy, irritated, and uh, it might make us concerned. But in histology, uh, see, it's very normal, uh, you know, it's, uh, in the dermis. But in the epidermis, there's all spongiosis. So so sometimes we call it eczematous nevus or, or inflamed nevus or, or myotin nevus. 
because everyone likes to put their name on, on, onto, a, onto a lesion. Um, an important feature here to be aware of, again, is a specific uh, situation. If you can see here, uh, this looks like a melanoma. You can see a lot of single cells, pegetoid cells, no nests, nothing. But then what you see here below it is a scar, and this is a surgical scar. And this is a recurrent nevus. So um, I, I, I just put this to, for you to be aware that, okay, sometimes the answer does not come from histology as much as, as it comes from the patient's history. So when you see a feature like this, okay, this could definitely be a melanoma. It could be a melanoma with some sclerosis under it for some other reason. But uh, when you see features like this, you should always go back uh, and check the history of the patient if the patient had a nevus removed in this location before. So if the patient had the lesion removed before, this is a reassuring feature that this is a, a, a recurrent nevus. Recurrent neva can have features of melanoma, but only on top of the scar. If, the, if, if, if you see the scar is here and the, there's like a lot of single cells going and pegetoid cells going all over here, I would be considered a melanoma. But in contrast, what we see here is features of a very normal nevus. You can see here cells that are bland looking. Uh, they are starting to scatter out and becoming smaller nests and smaller in size and the deeper components. So if you can see here, outside the scar, it's a feature of very normal nevus. Again, here as well. See, outside the scar area, you can see the scar. Outside the scar area, features of a very normal nevus. So that's really pretty reassuring that this is just a recurrent nevus. So always be aware of this phenomenon not, so to avoid overdiagnosing melanomas. Another example here is something that is not really melanocytic, which one of you mentioned earlier. This is a solar lentigo. You can see here the what we call the the the, the brown feet. Uh, it, it has like you know um, uh, uh, long reefy ridges with with brownish uh, uh, ends. Um, there's no increase. In, if you can see, they're all keratinocytes that are pigmented. Sometimes it's hard to to make sure, so you can always do a a, a stain for it uh, for for melanocytes, and you would notice that there's hardly any increase in in, in color. So this is a classic uh, example of. Uh, of a, of, a, of a normal uh, 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 solar lentigo. Moving on to uh, the next uh, lesion, and uh, we're running a bit uh, late, so I might pick up a little bit speed here. So what we see here is uh, different from what we saw earlier. So here, this is a melanoma and uh, malignant melanoma in situ. So first of all, the, one of the important features is the size of the lesion. You can see here, it's pretty large. So when you see large lesions, in the sun-exposed areas, always be concerned. See how big it is going for all the way from here to here. Second of all, it's not very symmetric. Some areas have no nests, some areas have a lot of nests, so it's not really symmetric. Another important feature is, if you can see here, the masses not only are there in the arches, but they're going way up in the, in, the, in the epidermis, and it's not just in the center of the lesion. It's in the periphery and, all, and basically all over the lesion. See, this is the periphery of the lesion, and you can see cells are starting to go up. There is no dermal component, which is why we call it a... a, a uh, melanoma in situ, but you can see here it's very obvious. See the cells are scattered all over the all over the epidermis. Some areas form uh, small nests, but the the non-nested areas predominate over the nested areas. See here, all large cells. I can see here, like when I explained to you in the first lecture, you can tell that this is melanocyte, not a keratinocyte, because of the cytoplasm. Normally, if there's a cleft and a keratin, and you see a keratinocyte, you would not see much of a pinkish cytoplasm. You just see a blue nucleus and the cytoplasm is, is clefted from the from the nucleus. So again, melanocytes here. You can see them all becoming pagetoid. So so for example, this is a keratinocyte. You can see here dark color and the, 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 the cytoplasm is outside the, the, the cleft. Um, so again, see here. So you, it's, it's just uh, mostly single cells predominating over nests. And, and if they are nests, you would see them like in you know, irregularly shaped nests, not very well defined nests. All features of a melanoma in uh, in uh, situ. Moving on to the next one, um, this is a melanoma proper, not just a superficial spreading melanoma. And we will go to some of the features here that we would uh, find see with a melanoma. Um, see, it's go it's nested all the way to the base. It's the, it doesn't mature, it doesn't scatter. The cells you can see here deep in the dermis are the same, basically the size as you see here here in the junction. Um, it's a large, deep lesion. Um, if you can see here, the, the, the junctional component, huge nests, a lot of 
at pegetoid scatter, see here, they're going all the way up and you can tell for sure that these are melanocytes even without the, the stain, how they're nesting, going up deep in the, in the epidermis. These are all features of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, melanoma. I'll just use a lot of examples of melanomas here. Um, another type of uh, melanoma here, you can see here, lots of free ridges. Uh, with each uh, slide, I'll give you different example of features of melanoma. So another feature here, a large area of loss of free tear ridges. So you can see some areas have free tear ridges, some areas complete loss of free tear ridges. When you see a large area with loss of free tear ridges in a sun in a sun exposed area in an older person, this is melanoma until proven otherwise. Um, again, you can see here the 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 the, the epidermal component. The single cells more than the nest, and then they keep going up. Ab large abnormal cells. These are all features of uh, melanoma. Okay, I'll ask you a question. What type of uh, melanoma is this? Can anyone tell me? Of the, let's say, four major types of melanoma. Superficial spreading. Okay, superficial spreading is the correct answer and, uh, and, uh, and a very good answer from you. Um, but uh, in other words, uh, what, I mean, you're right, yeah, it is a superficial spreading melanoma, but what I like to say is my answer is who cares? No one cares what, uh, what, uh, what type of melanoma this is. Now, I mean, in the past, they, they might have cared because like, you know, there were certain like, you know, genes associated with uh, genetic abnormalities associated with each melanoma and, and we can base our genetic therapy uh, based on the type. But now we, we already have genetic testing that would allow us to know what genes are abnormal in a melanoma. And what really matters in any type of melanoma is its depth. Whether it's a superficial spreading, lentigo maligna, uh, nodular melanoma, I don't care as much as I care how deep it is. If, if you feel, if I see a nodular melanoma that's, that, that's like, you know, three millimeters and a lentigo maligna melanoma that's like seven millimeters, the lentigo maligna melanoma has a poor prognosis, even though generally speaking, the lentigo maligna has a better prognosis. So now we, uh, because uh, different genetic mutations can cause different types of melanomas, and they do matter in terms of therapy, we, we have other ways to, to, to find that out. So you, usually the type of melanoma doesn't really matter as much as the depth and other features, for example, like ulceration, but uh, the most important feature is the depth. Look here how a lot of single cells going all along the arch of the reti ridges. Remember when I told you the arches of the reti ridges? These going all the way around, so confluent, just streaming along, along the dermal epidermal uh, junction. This is a, these are all features of melanoma. This is what we, previously used to call nodular melanoma. Um, I'm looking for some, something here, but which I know that you know when you look for it, you never find it. But, uh, but uh, again, see the large cells here in the, in the, in the dermis. Um, I'm looking for something here for you, but I'm not really finding it right now. Um, let's see. Well, now when I'm presenting and uh, and uh, in the heat of discussion, I can't even focus on this. But uh, normally, you would find a lot of mitotic figures in the in the dermis. Um, we'll see them as we go along. Um, so again, you see here large not large collection of cells. They are not uh, maturing to the bottom. They're melanocytes. They are large. They are pleomorphic. These are all features of of, uh, of uh, melanoma. You would uh, uh, you would really hardly mistake this for really anything else. So, moving on. Again, features of uh, nodular melanoma here. You can see here going all the way to the uh, base, and you can see some of your mitotic figures here. Um, deep mitotic figures are other, again another mitotic figure here. You can see the cell is dividing. Uh, any, any, uh, again, another one here and another one here. So a lot of mitotic figures, another one here, another one here. See when, when you see, when it rains, it pours. Um, so, so, um, when you see a lot of mitotic figures or like basically any mitotic figure in the base of the lesion, it's, uh, it's cause for concern. Um, I mean, are nodular, nodular melanoma is just more symmetric or? Uh, yes, that's a, that's a, that's a feature that's usually seen in nodular melanomas compared to other melanomas. They are usually very symmetric. Uh, compared to the rest. So that's why you should not always use one criterion to, 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 to diagnose a melanoma. 
even though symmetry is the most important feature, but with nodular melanoma, everything else goes against it for it being a benign lesion. It's large de depth and, 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 and it's uh, a large, if you can see, we go back to nodular melanoma. Nests go all the way to the deep dermis, deep mitoses. Um, um, uh, the cells are pleomorphic uh, uh, and large, as you can see here. So everything goes against it except for symmetry. So nodular melanoma, both clinically uh, and, uh, and histologically, it tends to be very, very symmetric, as you can see here. It's very symmetric. So a good point that you, that you mentioned that I did not mention before. Again, acral lesion, if you can compare it to the normal acral lesion we saw earlier, huge uh, nest in the periphery uh, going into the top of the, epide of the epidermis. These are all features of uh, melanoma. Moving on, I will need to move on a little bit faster. So this was just another example of an acral nevus. Um, so um, move on to another example here, as we can see here. Don't want to uh, go through um, a lot. Again, another acral nevus here. Uh, this is a, 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 an important one. I, I just look at this one. This is another example of it. So, okay, this is what uh, Rapini once told us that this is the thing he always keeps in mind whenever he sounds out cases every day in, 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 in sign up. This is a dysmorphic nevus. This is a dermatopathologist nightmare because on low power, especially when you're seeing a lot of cases and you just want to finish them fast, this looks like a scar. Okay, and if they tell you that you know, they want to rule out a nevus or melanoma, you can just tell them that, you know, you can just think of it as like, you know, a previous uh, 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 recurrent nevus or something. But uh, if you look closely, there's a lot of lymphocytes that are spindle shaped in the in the dermis and what scares you even more is that when you use melanase stain for this one or SMB45 it will always be negative it's only positive with S100 so so you should keep that in mind but what what some of the features that would tell you that this is a nevus is like in most cases there is a junctional component to it and in, in more than two-thirds or like three-quarters of the cases there's a junctional you can see here melanocytes in the in the in the epidermis and another important feature that would tell you that this is a dysmorphic nevus, and they ask you about it a lot in the exam, is the lymphoid follicles. You find a lot of lymphoid follicles scatter around the lesion, as you can see here, here, here. So these are uh, lymphoid follicles, uh, 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 strong hints towards uh, dysmorphic nevus. And your other hint is when you do an S100 stain and the cells will light up. And that's basically the only stain, uh, SUX100 will also uh, stain it. But like, you know, the reg your reg regular H uh, HMB45 melanin usually would not stain the cells. So hence towards a dysmoplastic nevus is the epidermal component, as you can see another example here. Most often it's a lentigo maligna, as you can see here. This one I'm using as an example to show you how obvious sometimes the epidermal component be. And, um, and the dermal component uh, is sometimes not very obvious, if you can see here. Not very obvious, but you can see spindle-shaped cells scatter about uh, the, 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 the dermis. Here, there's not much lymphoid follicles, I have to admit, so it's a more difficult case. But what makes this one easier is the epidermal component and the, the scarring of the dermis. So dysmorphic melanomas usually have a better prognosis than regular melanomas. But then again, like other, any other melanomas, they're not to be missed because they eventually can metastasize and can lead to death. Another example here of, uh, of uh, dysmorphic melanoma, if you can see here cells along the dermis uh, and uh, lots of uh, scarring. This is a metastatic melanoma. Um, uh, very quickly, I will not uh, go through it very uh, in uh, much uh, detail, if you can see here. Uh, large nodules, lots of mitotic figures, lots of pleomorphism, see large, large abnormal cells throughout. And usually we like to describe them as cannonballs. No epidermal component, if you notice, no epidermal component. And again, as much as we try to make, uh, highlight the importance of histopathology, clinical is much more important. When you see a lesion like this, usually the differential diagnosis is either a melanoma or a, or a nodular melanoma or a metastatic melanoma. The most important distinguishing feature is a history of a previous melanoma. If a patient had a melanoma before, see the large mitotic figure here. Uh, if a patient has a previous melanoma, this is metastatic melanoma until, like, you know, proven otherwise. So, 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 so the clinical is much more important. And just for you at, at your level to know, the, it usually has the cannonball feature, large nodule uh, of uh, somewhat uniform cells compared to regular melanomas. Um, mitotic figures uh, are, are uh, like, you know, mitot mitosis galore. You, you see a lot of mitosis inside it and no epidermal component. Moving on very quickly. I don't want to like, you know, confuse. I just want to scare you a little bit. 
this what you would uh, think is like is a nevus. This is actually a nevoid melanoma. Um, or oh, a feature here, just very quickly see the nests go all the way deep, very uniform cells, a lot of mitotic figures, and uh, history of melanoma is very important. So just, I'm using this example just to tell you that history is very important, and in and melanoma, metastasis can look very much like a nevus. Um, at the end of the lecture, I just want to highlight to you how a stain looks like. This is when we do our most common stain, a melan A stain. This is an example of a lentigomaligna melanoma, if you can see here. Uh, the cells, uh, it really lights up the, uh, the, the, the melanocytes, goes all the way up in the, in the epi epidermis, um, and, uh, and it goes along with the loss of greasy ridges. So this, this, uh, this is a tool that you can use to, to, to highlight your, your cells and make it more clear, sometimes when it's difficult. And it's very often uh, difficult here. Um, another example here, uh, lentigum malignum melanoma. Uh, uh, the previous was the superficial spreading, sorry. This is mental lentigum malignum melanoma. If you can see here, it's going uh, along the, uh, with the lentiginous spread, going deep. But like I told you, you don't really, really care about the type of melanoma as, as much as the depth. So if you compare it to here, this is supposedly a superficial spreading, which usually is worse than lentigo malignum melanoma. But you can see here, it's more of in situ. So it's, it's good prognosis. Here, this is an invasive melanoma. See how deep it's going. And it's nesting all the way to the, to the deep dermis. So even though this is a, a classically a lentigo malignum melanoma, it has a worse prognosis than the case we saw previously. And uh, I apologize for taking a little bit longer in time. Um, uh, we, we just took a full hour right now. Um, um, I, um, I won't have time for questions now, but you can always like email me questions uh, uh, about uh, your, uh, uh, if there's anything you would like to know about this lecture. And uh, I will move the mic now for Dr. Uh, Ralva to, to, to give you a little bit quiz. And I highly encourage you to be here for the, for, for, to stay here uh, for the quiz. Um, um, uh, she has a lot of exciting questions to, to brush up and she will focus on, uh, on, uh, on uh, what we talked about before. So uh, please uh, welcome Dr. Alva for, for an exciting session of, uh, of uh, brainstorming cases. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Amin. Just for a while till I just move the things. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see it clearly. Okay, good. Thank you. Good afternoon all again. And um, so I will do a couple of brainstorming uh, cases. Um, I want everybody to participate, uh, whether you think it is a right or a wrong diagnosis. Uh, you can just um, type in your diagnosis, you can just speak it out, um, and um, you can just say the differential diagnosis or your description, um, and we are all here to learn. Okay, so let's move on. So the first case is a 50 years old man a present to dermatology clinic with a pigmented ulcerated nodule on his trunk. So I'll show you the, pic the slides first and I'll move through the slide. If you do know the answer, you do have a differential diagnosis in your mind, you can just type it on the chat box. Okay, so this is the lesion under the low power. Okay, and this is a bit more higher power. Just focus on the details of the slide. I'll give you around, let's spend a minute to think about it. Um, so what is your diagnosis? I kind of make it a little bit easier with the uh, multiple choices. Acral antagonist melanoma, nodular melanoma, spitz tumor, or dysmoblastic melanoma. Mm -hmm. Kind of starting to have an answer. You want me to move back to the low power again? Yes, please. So how to approach the diagnosis? When you see a slide, there are lots of details and it can be a difficult to process to know what's important, what's not where to begin, where to start. So first of all, don't panic. Take a deeper breath and think in a systemic way, especially for resident R1 and 2. Take your time and look at the slide. And usually I have a kind of a systemic way of approaching the slide. So first of all, I will ask myself, is it a neoblastic? 
or is it an inflammatory process under the low power? And sometimes it doesn't fit either of them. So then after, if I think about if it is a neoblastic, then I would think, is it a benign or is it a malignant process? And that usually depends on the size, the symmetry, the circumscription of the lesion itself. And if I think about inflammatory, is it a vesicular bolus? Is it a spongiotic? Is it a psoriasiform? Is it a vascular lesion? And what is the major infiltrate? Uh, what is the major cell that is predominant in the slide? And that's kind of direct me toward a couple of differential diagnoses when I go along with the higher power. Okay, so we get a couple of C and D and B. So the correct answer is B. So congratulations for Dr. Iman. Um, so she mentioned uh, B. So if we go back, I go back again. So under the low power, so what do you think? So usually when we go with the melanoma, we either describe it, does it go in a radial, on a horizontal growth phase, or does it go vertically, more an invasive growth phase? And usually nodular melanoma, it go into more an invasive growth phase. And you can find here as well the ulceration, thin epidermis, and maybe ulcerated as well. And um, usually it is, as Dr. Amin said, it is a bit unusual with a nodular melanoma that is symmetrical in a dome-shaped and polypoid tumor as well. And the dermal component have a smaller nest with an expansile growth. And usually the tumors are, are epithelioid. Okay, as we see here. Okay. So, anybody know what is the stain that we are using for melanocytic marker? And we are using one of the stain for our lesion here. So, anybody can type which stain that you are usually used for melanocytic marker? S100. Yes. S100 is one of them. Any other stain? Yes, MART1 that we are using here for our lesion, it's, it's MB45. Any other one? No, not Suxten. Tyrosinase and MIFT as well. Okay, so that's a different uh, couple of stain. But as you know, that S100 is not specifically for melanoma. So it can be present in other, um, uh, in other lesion as well. So don't depend only in S100 if you have a couple of differential diagnoses in your mind, okay? So let's move on to the next case. A 38 years old man present to his dermatology with a well-circumscribed black blue lesion on his scalp. Sometimes the history will give you a hint as well. Think in a systemic way, okay? Anybody know the diagnosis before I go to the Blue nebus? Yes. So what, what type of a blue nebus do you think? Is it the cellular? Is it the epithelioid? Is it the atypical blue nebus? Or is it a spes nebus? Cellular blue nebus. Yes, absolutely right. And Dr. Amin, he go over it as well. Um, the hint is that it is in the extremity. It can be found in the scalp as well and usually is composed of a spindle and dendritic and melanophage. But what is make it more of a cellular type that it is kind of, as you said, it's broader, a bit broader on the surface and it span all the way here. It is span all the way to the reticular dermis and involving the superficial paniculus as well, forming the bulbous expansion, which is called dumbbell-like in appearance. And the spindle cell is predominate um, and unlike the conventional kind of a blue nevus, because it's separated by the collagen bundle. So the cellular kind of type, um, they are attached to each other, but the common blue nevus, they are separated by the collagen bundle. Okay, and the mitosis are very rare as well. Okay. Okay, so let's, as you see here, the spindle cell. So that's the blue nevus, the cellular type. Okay, 75 years old man has a spreading indurated plaque on the scalp. Okay. 
jakat the epidermis, then move on systematically, and then focus on the area that you think that more most of the unusual kind of appearance um, it brought into your um, mind. So the question is not what is your diagnosis. You have to know the diagnosis, so at least to know what immunohistochemical staining will be mostly positive for this lesion. Is it March 1? Melan A, HMP45, pancytokeratin, SOX10, or cytokeratin hyphen 6? So, what do you think? You can just shout the answer. You can just type it on, on the chat box. So do you know the diagnosis? Mm -hmm. We get an answer of between B and D. Okay. Any more answer? Just type what you think. If you have it in the exam, what you will put? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is actually D. Yeah. It sucks then. So do you know what is the diagnosis then? Desmoplastic. Desmoplastic. Exactly. Yes. It is kind of a little bit of revision of what Dr. Ami said. And as you see here at scanning, that the reticular dermis is altered by the cellular infiltrate, including the nodule of a cluster of lymphocytes. And you can see, you can appreciate here the cluster of the lymphocyte, which can simulate like a, it's like an inflammatory process, but that's not what the dermal epidermal junction will give you a hint as well, that it is a, that it is a, um, um, a dysmoblastic melanoma. Um, the atypical spindle cell, when you go into more of a higher power, you will see the atypical spindle cell, okay? And that's going deep into the dermis and subcutaneous. And they are separated by the collagen bundle, a thick, dense collagen bundle with a background of solar elastosis and scarring as well. And that will give you more of a hint toward the dysmoblastic um, melanoma. And yes, SOX10 is the most specific for dysmoblastic melanoma, as uh, Dr. Amin said. It's one of the newer melanocytic markers. Okay. Let's move on. And that's this 100. That, as I told you, it will be positive uh, in dysmoblastic, but it is not specific. If you do SOX10, it will be positive for dysmoblastic melanoma. Okay. 15 years old girl present with her family doctor with a pink nodule on her cheek. Okay. Go into more of a higher power. Anybody know the answer? What is your diagnosis? Is it a congenital nevus? It's a dysmoblastic nevus. Is it a nodular melanoma? It's a spitz nevus. Or is it a spitzoid melanoma? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, I guess all of you are right. It's a spitz nevus. You're absolutely right. Okay, so if we go, if we focus more, the history will give you a hint. A young middle aged, and usually the spitz nevus will occur in the extremity and in the face as well. Okay, and it's usually a small circumscribed symmetrical papule. And as we term it, uh, Dr. Amin term it as well. It's an nevus of the large spindle and epithelial cell because it will be composed mainly of epithelial cell or a spindle cell or can be both as well, okay? Um, so you'll see the large cell with the abundant uh, cytoplasm with the spindle or polygonal cell. The nuclei are more homogeneous and um, the presence of an important feature, the maturation, because as you go from the top to the bottom, the cell is more mature on the surface and larger on the surface, and it's smaller on the base as well, okay? And that's a usual hand. There is one small hand that Dr. Amin, he said it as well. And you know what is that is? Camino. One of the, yes, that's the Camino bodies as well. And you will, there is absolutely no mitosis or sometimes a low grade of mitosis, but usually it's absent. Okay, then the presence of the community body. These are a couple of 
very important feature of Spitz nevus. Okay. We have a question on the marker. A specific marker for medical cell carcinoma. Sandred, CEA, cytokeratin 20, Desmond, CD45. Yes, it's cytokeratin 20. Anybody know Desmond is a marker for? Leomyosarcoma. Okay. Okay, let's move on to the next question. A specific marker for the fibroblast. Pimentin, chromogranin, keratin, CD117, or CD1A. It's a fibroblast marker. Get this question in the exam. You have to give it a shot. Oh, okay. C or A. <laughs> C. Well, not keratin, because keratin you will find it in the sweat gland. So that's a C out. A is a correct answer. It's by Menten for the fibroblast. Anybody know the importance of the marker CD117 at the C kit? It's a marker for? Very important marker. You got to know it for your exams. For the mast cell, absolutely, that's correct. CD1A, very important marker as well. Langerhan cell, yes, that's correct. Yes, well done. Okay, but the part for the fibroblasts by Menton. Okay, I guess I have the last case. So it's a 50 years old man present with his family doctor with a pigmented papule on his arm. Okay, focus on the detail. And kind of what is the most distinctive thing that you will see in the slide? What brought your mind first? What is your diagnosis? Xanthoma, balloon cell nevus, granular cell tumor, sebaceous adenoma or melanoma? Yes, it is B, balloon cell nevus. Now, why it is B? So once you see this, once you see the biopsy, you will see half of the nevus cell consists of an enlarged cell with a clear, foamy, and vacuolated cytoplasm. This is small with half also small nuclei, and these called balloon cell. And you can just identify them with the low power as well. And when you go into higher power, the cytoplasm of these balloon cell, you can see it here, they reveal a kind of a small melanin granule. It's full of melanin granule. Okay, and they can be single and the group usually on the epidermis. And absolutely we haven't seen any of the atypia or mitosis um, on the slide. And that's kind of calming us that it is a nevus. And you, anybody know the stain that we are using for, for balloon cell nevus? This can be positive for, that's a bit harder because when it is actually the balloon cell nevus, is one of the rare melanocytic nevus. So um, the stain that is going to be positive is, is 100 for the balloon cell nevus. Okay. And that's mainly it. Hope you enjoy um, the brainstorming lectures. Um, and we will see you all uh, next week, uh, Saturday. We will repeat the first, um, uh, the first derm path lecture of the normal of the skin, especially for um, resident R1 and 2 who, and for others who didn't uh, get time to uh, 